Some law enforcement agencies are looking to the skies and determining that unmanned aircraft systems, UAS, offer solutions to maintaining public safety and processing crime scenes. Standing up a UAS program takes research, planning, and training. Under the right circumstances, the technology can produce great results. The Mesa County Sheriff's Office in Grand Junction, Colorado, uses UASs primarily to assist in crime scene and traffic accident investigations. Ben Miller, Unmanned Aircraft Program Director, says the aircraft's cameras record information and help officers process it. His fixed-wing aircraft and quadcopter are more than cameras. With the help of computer apps that come with the aircraft and the addition of readily available apps like Google Maps, these vehicles provide precise measurements that help officers visually present special information to investigators and prosecutors. Photographing a crime or accident scene with standard equipment on the ground can take hours or even days. A UAS can fly over the same scene and take digital images in 20 to 40 minutes. When Miller is called to a scene, he says the nature of the investigation dictates which aircraft he'll fly. Fixed-wing aircraft require greater launching distance and may require an assisted launch setup, like a bungee cord or catapult. Quad helicopters can take off in smaller spaces. Once Miller selects the appropriate aircraft, here's how he proceeds. In a nutshell, what it looks like when we show um, onto a scene. We're basically going to make the notifications that our FAA approval um, requires us to do. Uh, we usually do that in route on the phone. Um, we show up on a scene, we'll tie in with whatever management is there. They'll kind of give us a brief of this is what we've got. Um, we'll assess the area that we'd like to fly. We'll check it for obstructions, whether that's trees, buildings, antennas, stuff like that. Um, We'll develop where we're going to fly, and we're going to make sure that it's safe to do so, etc. Um, we'll pull the vehicle out. We'll do we'll do the quick assembly that is required, load the batteries, etc., in a quick pre-flight. Then we take the vehicle off. It goes what we call downrange, flies the mission. Miller plugs in coordinates on a computer screen, and the aircraft takes off and enters that predetermined perimeter or box. It flies from the nearest point within the box to the farthest point and then methodically flies back and forth in a pattern photographing everything on the ground. Back at the office, the images are stitched together and three-dimensional images are created. So we're not just presenting pictures that say this is what it looked like. We're actually presenting maps and models. And in those maps and models, they're geospatially accurate to the real world. That's a fancy word, way of saying we can measure in those models. And measuring in a geospace tells us a lot of things. Distance is often a significant factor in investigations. Distance tells us plausibility. Could a person actually get from point A to point B as fast as they said they did? Miller says the sheriff's office maintains a digital evidence management system where images are tagged and access is restricted to qualified investigators and their managers. They give remote access to the district attorney's office and any viewing or downloading of images is logged. The great thing is that we're collecting digital information, and digital information has its um, advantages over the old way of doing business, where there's a potential to lose evidence, there's a potential to not totally track when the only time we track stuff is when we write it down. Every time something happens to this information, it's logged, and we, can, we keep those logs in perpetuity. Miller set up a demonstration outlining the use of his quadcopter at a traffic accident scene. Using his software and Google Maps, he selects his add point tool, adds four points over the intersection. These points form a box delineating the photo survey area. He adjusts the box to eliminate obstructions and to fly at a safe distance away from buildings. Now the software tells him his survey area. In this case, it's a half acre. It tells him it'll take one minute and 49 seconds to fly the mission. Now he activates his quadcopter and it goes to its designated entry point. The aircraft methodically flies back and forth, taking photos of the entire box. Using GPS and other sensors on board, it makes sure the photography has perfect overlap. After recording for approximately a minute and a half, the quad returns to its takeoff location and lands. Miller says using unmanned aircraft to collect data in a scenario like this has at least two advantages over doing things strictly on the ground. It is a quick and accurate way to process the accident scene 
and the scene is cleared and traffic can resume faster. So, both the sheriff's office and the public are well served. Considering public opinion is a key component of the successful launch of a UAS program. Talk to community residents before implementing a program like Mesa County's. A common concern is privacy. Miller explains that his equipment is used with strict guidelines, does not eavesdrop, and does not have the capacity to look through windows or walls. One of the common misperceptions that uh, the public has is that as these you know, the sensors become greater and greater and they're just amazing that we begin to invade upon the privacies um, protected under your Fourth Amendment. And that's really not the case. As you can see, we're not looking inside a building. As concerns arise, law enforcement agencies can address them with the public. Here are some common myths about UASs. Myth. Law enforcement watches the general public from the skies waiting to find lawbreakers or violations. Fact. UASs are generally used for crime scene and traffic investigations and fires. Flight time is limited to 20 to 30 minutes or an hour at most. For this reason, flight missions must be well defined. Myth. UASs carry weapons. Fact. The unmanned aircrafts used by law enforcement are not military-style UASs. They are unarmed. The FAA prohibits the carrying of weapons on public safety UASs, period. Myth. UASs are outfitted with infrared cameras that can look through windows and record what is going on inside private homes. Fact. The UAS's infrared cameras used by law enforcement cannot see inside windows. They do not record activity inside of homes. The Mesa County Sheriff's Office established its UAS program six years ago and continues to work with industry groups and the Federal Aviation Administration to improve guidelines for their use. What may have started as a tense relationship between law enforcement and the FAA has evolved into a collaboration that has yielded a more streamlined process. Former FAA UAS Integration Office National Law Enforcement Program Manager David Morton worked on building a more congenial relationship with law enforcement. The FAA uh, is really in a supportive role with law enforcement and public safety. It is not an adversarial relationship. It has never wanted to be. Since I took over the program as the National Program Law Enforcement Manager, we have had a complete shift in the way we would deal with public safety people, and that is we lean way, way forward to try to find ways to accommodate help and guide law enforcement and the integration of this technology because we know it's very, very important. And who better to fly it than the most disciplined group of people? Morton says the first step for an agency to set up a UAS program is to review current state and local statutes to discover if there are any restrictions or outright prohibitions. Then he advises agencies to clearly define the intended mission or concept of operations. Will the aircrafts be used for crime scene forensics, traffic investigations, search and rescue, or SWAT team support? Different agencies have different needs. Once an agency identifies those needs and how UASs can help address them, they may wish to elicit help from an agency with an established program. Then they can begin to work with the FAA to receive a Certificate of Waiver or Authorization, COA, which permits public agencies and organizations to operate a particular aircraft for a particular purpose in a particular area. These are the steps to approval. Submit a validation letter from a city, county, or state attorney. Apply for a COA online at www.faa.gov forward slash UAS forward slash public underscore operations. Complete and submit the online COA. Morton says to expect some back and forth from the FAA during the process to ensure all the information is complete. Typical approval time is about 60 days from validation of the COA application. The FAA expects to release the final 14 CFR Part 107 rule, the new Federal Aviation Regulation addressing small UAS, in the near future. As soon as that new rule is published, Agencies will have the option of complying with this rule, and that will make their access to the NAS much simpler. 
The new Part 107 rule stipulates operator certification, a UAS license, UAS registration, the aircraft N number, as well as other safety guidelines. However, the rule may only allow for daytime operations in non-congested airspace. While there will be some restrictions to the Public Safety UAS mission, it can be assumed this process will be much easier to follow than the current COA process. A UAS program may or may not be appropriate for your agency. When weighing the facts about UASs, consider that the price tag for the aircraft can be in the hundreds of dollars instead of the tens of thousands that of manned aircraft. They typically cost less than $25 an hour direct cost to operate. It costs about one cent to charge a battery. Most of these aircraft are easy to operate. The computer on board flies the aircraft. This allows easier training to operate as opposed to a manned aircraft. A word of caution though. There are small UASs that have been thoroughly designed with the law enforcement mission in mind. There are many others that are entering the mission space that may not have the utility, reliability, or functionality of more sophisticated models. As with any purchase, buyer beware.